Hi everyone, I'm Lou Vescio, Principal of Concordia Ontario Academy. And on behalf of our entire teaching staff and our management team, I'd like to welcome our new students to Concordia Ontario Academy. We're Canada's newest and most dynamic school and we're located in the heart of beautiful Niagara region. So I'm honored to be your principal and looking forward to supporting each and every one of you to help you achieve your academic goals. Concordia will be there every step of the way in your ed education to ensure your success. And the first step in ensuring your success is for you to participate in our orientation for new students wor workshop. So thank you for joining us today. The workshop will help you become more familiar with the school and how we operate. So we're thrilled to be joined today by one of our new students, Eason Shi, who's a highly talented and motivated student who will be starting his program at Concordia this week. Welcome, Eason. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. So before we get, begin our presentation, I'd like to thank Derek Liu, our Chief Counselor, for developing today's presentation for you. And at this time, I'd like to share the presentation with you. Sounds good. Okay, so please feel free to uh, pause the presentation at any time to review materials or to complete any required tasks. So Eason, if you have any, no. please be sure to ask them. Okay, got it. So let's get started. So for today's uh, workshop, we basically have six uh, sections. Uh, the first is the welcome and then how to study online, how to activate your student accounts, how to, to use our Canvas learning management system. Uh, we'll review some important school policies to help you succeed, and then we'll finish off with a question and answer period. So welcome to everyone, uh, especially you, Lisa, and I wish you a, a great start to the new semester that's upcoming. Yep. So uh, together or apart, either in person or online, we're still all members of uh, the same uh, Concordia community that binds us all to one another. So at this time, I'd like the opportunity to get to know uh, each other a little bit better. Um, we're interested in knowing more about you, Eason, and I believe uh, you also may have many questions for us. So let's talk. But just um, uh, as far as my background is concerned, I'm a, a lifelong educator and have been a principal in Ontario here for over 25 years and looking forward to the opportunity to working with our new students at Concordia. So uh, maybe Eason, if you can share a brief introduction about yourself, uh, just what makes you tick? What goals do you have? What university do you think that uh, you would like to head to once you're done your Ontario secondary school, high school diploma? Okay, so my name is Eason and I'm currently a grade 11 uh, student. And then I'm really, uh, excited to be uh, one of your one of the students in this uh, Ontario uh, the school and as well as my future aspects I, th I thought that uh, uh, my target universities would be uh, probably the uh, Tor Toronto University the one that yeah and some of my goals to it is that uh, I should always participate and uh, consistently engage in these uh, in the, uh, the the assignments and projects that are assigned and as well as uh, I would like to show academic uh, success through this uh, through the year yeah perfect thanks Ethan thanks for sharing and uh, we'll do our very best uh, our utmost to help support you to reach yeah. your academic goals yeah thank you so let's uh, talk a little bit more about Concordia Ontario Academy. So uh, here's an introduction. We're Canada's newest and best positioned school to help students achieve their academic goals and to prepare students for acceptance into the most prestigious Canadian and international schools. So we're looking at uh, maybe attending schools in the US, across Europe and in Asia. Uh, study options. Uh, we offer a full range of online and in-person programs. Uh, currently we're, uh, using an online platform and very soon we hope to be uh, delivering in-person programs. Um, we provide a stimulating curriculum. It's taught by highly qualified and experienced professional educators. And just so you know, we'll work tirelessly to help 
each and every one of our students to succeed. We've got a very supportive staff. Uh, we have small class sizes, which allows for increased personal attention from each of our teachers to our students. Um, we ensure students will be challenged academically to achieve their greatest pot pot potential in preparation for their future studies in post-secondary. And uh, our location, uh, as far as uh, the bricks and mortar school, we're located in the heart of beautiful Niagara region in Ontario, in Southern Ontario. Our campus boasts a fully functional school that includes full-size gymnasium and several multi-use playing fields outdoors. And we're situated on nine picturesque acres surrounded by a natural forest. So uh, as far as the Ontario Secondary School Diploma is concerned, just want to give you some information about that. The Ontario Secondary School Diploma or OSSD for short, it's a diploma that's granted to secondary school graduates that in the Canadian province of Ontario. So it's part of our publicly funded province-wide school system and Concordia will help you earn your credits towards your Ontario Secondary School Diploma. So in Ontario to graduate, all students are required to earn 30 credits to uh, earn their OSSD, but also a couple of additional components. We must complete the literacy component as well as uh, completing 40 hours of community service. So we'll share more information about um, those components and the expectations to uh, earn your OSSD um, in, in the months to come. So just a quick question, Eason, have you had any previous online studying experiences and have you never tried, you've tried, uh, or you're very familiar? Uh, what's your experience, Eason, with online uh, studying? Yes, I tried an uh, online study experience since it's in the, we're still in a COVID a pandemic. A lot of like uh, teaching has been uh, taught to me online, including like um, some courses like uh, math, English, science, and et cetera, yeah. Perfect, thanks for sharing. And I hope your experience has been a good one. And I hope that continues with us at Concordia. So we're gonna look a little bit uh, at how to study online effectively. So online learning is the future of education. Eason, you had mentioned that your courses are currently being delivered uh, through the online method. And we'll look at a couple of different ways to do that. It's both new and challenging for everyone. Uh, not everybody's familiar with it, but uh, we hope like once you get comfortable that you'll be able to demonstrate your academic abilities um, effectively. So there's two different uh, ways that uh, online program is delivered. One is flexible. And so we look at the asynchronous or self-paced and that's basically independent learning based on your own schedule. Uh, it includes recorded presentations such as, a sli as slideshows and videos. And just for your awareness, all of our programs in Ontario to earn um, a credit must um, have 110 hours of instructional uh, learning take place. So for totally asynchronous, it's self-paced. You do the 110 hours on your own, um, guided by or facilitated by an instructor, a teacher, and tutors. And to communicate, there's various ways through email. We have discussion boards. We have social media groups. And we have collaborative documents in the cloud that we use all in an effort to make sure that we stay in close communication with your teacher, with other students, with the principal, um, and with um, all the stakeholders involved. And the alternate way that we deliver online education is through a fixed or synchronous or real-time learning. And we actually schedule quizzes and tests and they're scheduled chat room time for students to share ideas. These scheduled video conferences are, are that we have those and group phone calls and we're live streamed lectures or demonstrations. So actually, the synchronous learning takes place at specific times during the course of the week. Uh, for our upcoming programs, uh, it will be totally asynchronous. Uh, and Ethan, that the programs that you will be uh, working on will be asynchronous. So you work at your own convenience uh, whenever you can uh, during the course of the week. And then we touch base and consolidate our learning on the weekends. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, we really strive to get an alignment between teaching and learning. So teachers have a responsibility and it's up to us to provide the best learning opportunities for you. And obviously the responsibility of students uh, to be actively engaged in the learning process. So uh, as far as the staff is concerned, as far as our management team and, and curriculum developers, we develop the curriculum. So all the lectures, the quizzes, the homework, et cetera, 
They're well developed and uploaded into our study system, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, we provide supports and guidance. So we'll have weekly office hours for students. There's an online discussion board. Uh, we communicate through email, through inbox chatting. Um, assessments and feedbacks will be provided by our experienced instructors. So those are responsibilities of the school staff. As far as students are concerned, some expectations that we have, obviously it's important to complete all of your tasks and assignments on time. Uh, just a suggestion, try to finish every lecture and your homework on time, be consistent. And we also suggest or recommend that you try to complete at least a small piece of work each and every day. And it's really important, especially when you're having some learning challenges to reach out for help whenever you feel lost, Make sure you contact your instructor for help. You'll have a team to support your study and not only the instructors, but I will be available. We have support staff, we have guidance, as well as other tutors that'll help uh, you succeed in your learning. So here's just a sample of what we would recommend for our students to um, participate in as far as their weekly schedule is concerned. So we see Monday to Friday and on weekends. So we start, typically the week by reviewing the syllabus and direction for assignments so you find out what's in store for the coming week you watch the course videos you read the assigned text and complete short knowledge quiz check which will be a formative test sometimes to uh, give the instructor um, an idea of uh, what your learning has been in prior learning and how prepared you are for the next learning um, tuesday wednesday we look at learning so we post in discussion thread drawing from readings, we drawing from readings and course videos, we complete the learning activity to master concepts, and we outline uh, assignments that are due for the upcoming two weeks. So on a Wednesday, for example, you might prepare for upcoming live sessions or prepare for our off live office hours, read assigned texts, read uh, peer responses in discussion form and post meaningful connections or questions. On Thursday, some of the activities you might participate in, you review recordings of the course and post any questions in the discussion forum that you may have. You continue engaging in discussion threads. You work on some homework, your assignments, complete papers and other assignments. And finally, on Friday and on the weekends, you read through uh, feedback and replies you've received, not only from your instructors, but anybody else that's involved in the program. It could be your peers. Uh, you take note of corrections and uh, make uh, any necessary changes. Uh, complete any course activities that you hadn't completed throughout the week. Uh, catch up on assigned readings and upload any assignments due for the week. Um, just one of our sayings to achieve big goals, you have to start with small habits. So what we're trying to accomplish here is to get into a routine or a habit to make sure that you log in each and every day and complete at least a small amount of work. Um, everything that you do is just an investment, uh, your time, your effort to help you achieve your goals. And they start with make uh, good habits, good study skills and good work habits. So how do you get support for your learning? As we mentioned, um, we're here every step of the way to ensure your success. And so there's a variety of ways that um, we uh, communicate with students and have students communicate with us. Uh, there's an inbox chat. So in our study system, you can send your questions to the instructor directly for help. Uh, through email, you can send an email to support to your support team for answers. Um, a counselor, we have counselors available and they can help you figure out uh, your non-academic questions. And that includes trying to navigate your, your way through uh, high school and uh, which courses that you need to take uh, to get you into the university and the specific program um, that you're, you're looking to, to be eligible for. As far as the principal is concerned, I'm here each and every day to help and support you and help guide you through the navigation of the educational system and just uh, to make you more aware of the expectations with the Ontario Secondary School Diploma and uh, everything that's involved uh, to make you not only your academics, but uh, all, any of the other activities in your life. We just wanna make sure there's a good balance and I'm here to help and support you every step of the way. And obviously you, have, uh, you may have an agent who's also there to provide you with advice in achieving your goals. 
So uh, a big uh, part of um, what we do in our operations at Concordia is with our student account activation, and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that. But the formal name for our study system is LMS, or a learning management system. And for us, we use Canvas at Concordia. So let's look at uh, the steps um, that we'll take to make sure that you're totally activated. So we're starting at the bottom, step one, students will receive a student email so you can activate your school email. Uh, that's the first step and every student is asked to use his or her, her school email when contacting school staff. So if you wanna contact myself or the instructors or tutors or facilitators, then it's best to use uh, your email. Then we'll activate your Canvas Learning Management System account. And this is in place for teaching and learning. So it's very critical that we gain a lot, uh, an understanding of how the LMS actually works uh, so that students are able to uh, make sure that they have access to information and can upload any assignments or tests or quizzes that are required. Um, one of the first steps uh, that we'll take later on this week, Eason, is to finish uh, your LMS intro course. So once you log into your LMS system, you'll need to finish a learning online orientation program before starting the formal learning program. And that just provides more details about Canvas and about the school operations and the expectations. And we'll okay. talk about that a little bit later. And so now you're all set and good to go. Um, and so at this time, um, we would typically activate your accounts and get your Canvas LMS accounts going um, and then activate uh, your, your course. But what we'll do is we'll wait till the end of this workshop and then uh, what we can do all of that at the end if that works for you. Okay. Sorry, did you start? <laughs> okay. So let's have a, a closer look at our Canvas learning management system. And so when you log into your URL and when you look there at that instructure.com and when you get onto that website, what you'll do is you'll see that, uh, that link. And then what you do is you enter your email and password, which will be provided for you. And then once you log in, you'll go to your dashboard. So that's uh, number two there, the dashboard. And so once you log in, you'll see this page and it's the dashboard of your student account. So what it'll do is it'll list all the courses you're taking and other relevant information with regard to your um, being at Concordia. Um, one of the um, uh, tasks that uh, we ask students to do is after they've completed the test or assignment is to upload a file. So what you do is you go to your dashboard and then you'll find, you'll see where the assignments are and you click on the assignments and your uh, assignments will come up. And then once you complete your assignment, then you'll be given instructions as to upload your files. So all of that um, is, uh, there's lots of support and direction to make sure that everybody is very familiar with that operation. So if you're interested in learning more about Canvas and its functions, uh, we'll get that through the learning online orientation course that I've mentioned. And that'll, you'll complete that uh, prior to starting your actual course. And some of the other features uh, that we'll learn uh, about in Canvas is how to communicate, uh, not only with your instructors, but with um, the school counselors, with the principal and other stakeholders. Uh, we'll learn about um, syllabus, what's involved in the course, the specific modules and the, the school year calendar and when um, tests assignments are due. Um, profile and system setting, you'll be able to do that, uh, set your unique settings. Um, also in Canvas, obviously we'll have provided for you assignments, your quizzes, your tests, all of your grades, and then your school policies. And that's something that it's very important to, to be aware and knowledgeable of school policies, again, to help you to be better um, informed. So speaking of school policies, I'd like to just touch on a couple that are very key to your success. So uh, we'll review a couple important sections of the student code of conduct, which is found in the school, student uh, school course calendar. So all of these um, important policies are available to you and to your parents in our school course calendar. Uh, just have a look at the semester. So Eason, for you, um, our semesters will last typically about 10 weeks. So it's about two and a half months. And we look, um, and those are the different times that the 
semesters are offered and when students start and complete their programs. And the other in Ontario, typically there are two um, longer semesters where students will take four courses at one time for five months. And it's typically would run from September to January where they'll complete four courses and then start up four new courses in September and end in June. But for our online programming and for our asynchronous learning, uh, so typically once we get started and we look here uh, for us, we're getting started towards the end of April. So you look at the red line that we've got right here. And that's uh, basically, Ethan, that's the semester that you're going to be starting in uh, just towards the end of April. And you'll have about 10 weeks to complete the program. Okay. So it's very important uh, that we have ongoing communication um, both ways. Uh, it's a partnership partnership between home and school and the student and the school and the parents in the school. Uh, but we ask you to, to remain obviously in constant communication uh, and uh, only communicate through one of the following. This is very important. So one of the following through Canvas, the inbox mail that we have available for you. There's a discussion board, there's announcements, there's functions. Uh, we also have the school email, as we mentioned, and then group chat. Uh, really important and what we really stress, um, please don't disclose any personal contact information to anybody else, your students. It's your confidential information, uh, which we want you to keep to yourself with, with regard to our communication policy. Ask academic questions uh, through the discussion board in Canvas instead of asking questions through email. And the reason we say that is that um, oftentimes teachers and facilitators and other students are logged into Canvas and they'll be able to answer your questions quicker than email because not everybody uh, is constantly connected to their email. Um, search before asking, search the discussion board before posting duplicate questions. Oftentimes when you have a question, other students may have similar kinds of questions. So if it's the answer is already posted, please make sure to look there first. Ask the administration questions. Um, email should only be used for asking administrative questions such as asking for extensions for your homework or using the group chat. And finally, and most importantly, uh, just being respectful. Uh, that's our communication policy. You're expected to be respect, respectful uh, towards your instructor and fellow classmates, both in, both in person and online. I'm gonna talk a little bit about academic integrity and this must be honored by all students. Um, obviously one of the biggest um, rules and policies that we have, not only in Concordia, but in Ontario, is that there's no cheating or plagiarism of any kind. So we won't tolerate it. It's just not um, something that um, we expect you to do. So we expect you to do your own work. Um, and so just some of the possible consequences um, that may occur when you're in violation of this policy. So depending on the severity of the incident, the following steps may be taken to address plagiarism or cheating. So in cases of unintentional plagiarism, that's when you do that uh, unintentionally, you're not aware, the student will be asked to revise the assignment to provide correct references. So you have to make sure that you provide the, the source for all of the information that you're providing. So it's not considered plagiarism. The teacher will address the incident with the student and parents or guardians may be contacted. But in case of intentional plagiarism, which is much more serious, the student will receive a mark of zero on that assignment, the test, or even the exam. And the teacher will interview the student and report the incident to the principal. Parents or guardians will be informed. Um, and so this is a serious matter and uh, it can cost you uh, not only grading and marks and evaluation and achievement, but um, when it continues and if there's multiple intentional violations, a number of possible measures will be considered, including removal from the program. So hopefully we won't get to that. Again, if you've got questions, you're having difficulties, please contact your instructor or myself or any of the counselors to make sure that you get the information that you need. Uh, just one more policy I want to touch on. It's with regard to late or missed submissions. We know that um, uh, everybody has a lot going on in their lives and, and the academics is, is a, a key part to that, but um, sometimes things come up or there's personal issues, you have to address other matters. But um, as far as uh, work is concerned and your tests and assignments at Concordia, it's really important that you submit those on time. So just some of uh, the policy uh, notes, missed exams or homework will typically result in a mark of zero 
unless there's a valid reason that's provided in advance. So um, oftentimes if you get sick or there's something that gets in the way of um, your writing an exam or completing homework, um, please let us know in advance and we'll make um, um, up a schedule to have you rewrite it at a later date. Uh, number two, late homework will result in a deduction of marks, which have obviously a negative effect on your student grades. And uh, especially if you're wanting to get into, you know, the most uh, prestigious universities, uh, so a lot of the programs, uh, there's a lot of competition to get into them. So it's important that you maintain your high grades. And so um, if you run into challenges or issues with late homework or not getting um, assignments in on time, you'll, you'll get a deduction in marks and it's not uh, uh, going to look well um, on your final grade. And just a reminder that no grades will be deducted due to illness or other emergencies. So those were a couple of the policies that uh, I wanted to share with you from the, the uh, student uh, and the school uh, course calendar. And so they're from the student code of conduct. So. Um, that's the end of our um, formal presentation. Um, thank you for completing it. Um, Eason, I hope you enjoyed the orientation for New Students <laughs> Workshop. Um, as I mentioned before, you'll learn more details about getting started with your program when you participate in the learning online orientation, which you'll complete in Canvas just prior to starting your formal uh, Ontario Secondary School Diploma course courses. So uh, Ethan, we're really excited that you've chosen to join us at Concordia in our Concordia family and to study with us. Um, um, for Ethan and all new students, um, I challenge you to do your very, very best. And Ethan, uh, to demonstrate a high level of excellence uh, that we know that you've demonstrated in the past, um, to lay a foundation uh, for a successful future and to continue to make your parents proud of your academic achievements. So, it's the start of a new semester for you here at Concordia. And time to renew your commitment yeah. uh, to yourself, to your education, and to your future. So we wish you immense success in your programs at Concordia and know you'll be greatly rewarded for your efforts. So have a great semester and best of luck, Eason, and to all our other students at Concordia. Thanks for joining us today. Take care and stay safe.